The principle of cause and effect, simply put, is that everything that happens, particularly in the, the human body, there's always a reason for it. That things don't happen for simply no reason. So if you have an effect, there is a cause. And if there's a cause, there will be some kind of knock-on effect secondary to that. And there's a few things that go into you know having an appreciation and an understanding of this. Firstly, it has to do with when we're looking to try to understand, okay, well, what do we need to do if we're dealing with some kind of a, a health issue, symptoms, things along these lines. Symptoms by their nature are effects. And it doesn't matter what you choose to call them. So you can have in their you know, entire textbooks with all of the different classifications and the categories of this named condition and this named condition and this named syndrome and this named disease. These are all effects. And so you can, you know, do what you would to perhaps treat the effects or you can actually question, all right, what is the underlying cause of these? Because no matter what name that you might give it, you know, what, what is the underlying cause? And oftentimes there's gonna be a, a little bit of a mismatch and it means that, you know, there's a different form of care that might be necessarily the difference between, you know, treating the effect or, you know, treating the cause of that. Now, the second bit when it comes to understanding that is that usually when there is some kind of a cause, it can actually have multiple effects and it's not always linear either. And this has to do with the nature and the way that the, the body is um, conducts itself and works in terms of its neurology, also in terms of its uh, physiology. So it would be nice and easy if we could say that, ah, if you have this problem, it produces this effect. You have this problem, it produces this effect. If you have A, it causes B. But the reality is, the way that the body works is it's non-linear. A can cause B, but it can also cause C, D, and E. And even B, B can be caused by X, Y, and Z. And so because everything is crisscrossing back and forth, there are no certainties when it comes to the connection between cause and effect, only probabilities and risk factors. And what it requires is it requires us not only looking at the individual effects, but we have to then consider, okay, is there a common denominator in terms of our structure, our physiology, or our function that could actually explain these multitudinous effects and how likely is it? So what we do then in the, the healthcare arena is we'll work through a, a hierarchy of probabilities. And the truth is, is that we can be wrong about these things despite our very best efforts. Why? Because there are no absolutes. We have to look and say, okay, this is what's going on. These are the objective findings that we have. So what is the most probable connection? And thus, what is the most probable solution in terms of actually looking at the cause? And this is why it can also be so terribly frustrating for people when they're trying to look for answers, particularly if they're dealing with long-standing health issues. It's because as much as we wish that we had the research that shows these connections like that, the way that so much you know, research is done in the health and the medical arena is it's looking for direct linear connections. But as we said, the reality is that is not the way that the human body actually works. It's in terms of probabilities and risk factors. And so by understanding that, it at least opens us up to understand, okay, that there is actually, there's a gap between cause and effect, but push comes to shove, every effect always has a cause. Things do not happen in the body for no reason. We don't always know what the reason is, but if and where a person is experiencing something, even though we may say cause unknown, etiology unknown, there is still some kind of a cause. And it usually then requires us to use a little bit of logic and have to start to think outside the box and to use our brains a little bit so that we may be able to come up with a solution that gives you that best opportunity to actually heal. So not always an easy, and it does require having a little bit of you know leap of faith, one of those trust but verify kinds of things. But in the same breath as we often say with these is that no matter what you do, You've got to be getting functional improvements within six to 12 weeks. 
if that something is you know what you actually need in order to be well. So a lot of different things that can go on between the world of diagnosis, assessment, cause and effect, or excuse me, the other way around, effect and cause. Um, but by understanding that difference, that actually is what makes a, a really big difference in terms of a person's understanding about A, how do they actually get to experience the kinds of issues that they are, but then B, what do they actually need to do in order to get onto the other side of that so that they can be well.